ABC Sports presents live from a pretty valley called Pinole near San Francisco in its 28th season, the Professional Bowlers Tour. Qualifying in fifth place, he last won in 1985, the outgoing PBA president, Ernie Schlegel. In our first match, he'll face a 16-time champion from Beaumont, Texas, Wayne Webb. In the second game, looking for his second PBA title from Freehold, New Jersey, Parker Bone III. In second position, celebrating his 27th birthday, also vying for his second title, Ron Williams. And our tournament leader, making his first career championship round appearance from Cleveland, Ohio, David D'Entremont. That's our field for the $125,000 ARC Pinole Open on the Professional Bowlers Tour. And you're looking at the member-provoking Golden Gate Bridge as we say hello to you from the Pinole Valley Lanes, our first stop in a tour of 16 cities in America, beginning with this tournament. And you know, as we begin our 28th season, I'll tell you again that I'm Chris Schenkel. But when we started 28 years ago, it was black and white television. <laughs> there was no videotape. We didn't have videotape replays. My friend Johnny Carson had not started his nightly series. But to put it more in perspective, reality really sets in when you consider this fact. The three top bowlers on our telecast today weren't even born when we started. Well, here we go with the first part of three hours of exciting competition on ABC. We're the first of ABC's 1-2 Saturday afternoon punch, professional bowlers tour telecast, followed by... ABC's Wide World of Sports, and today, the beauty of the World Figure Skating Challenge of Champions, Brian Orse or Brian Boitano, yes, including Debbie Thomas, and the incredible Dorothy Hamill. Also, United States premier ski jumper, Mike Holland, winning a prestigious World Cup in Austria yesterday, and the Athlete of the Year presentation. We're pleased to announce, too, that for the first time, the hearing-impaired community will have an opportunity to further enjoy our telecast, and we'll tell them more about that later. Right now, I'm glad to bring in, after a record year in 1988, his 15th year with us, Nelson Burton, Jr., Bo. Thank you, Chris, and uh, honestly, I don't remember that black and white either, partner. You don't? <laughs> no. I'm the cradle. Oh, no, yeah, I wish. <laughs> you know, 1988 was a, a great year for the PBA. We had Bob Benoit's 300 game at the Quaker State. Brian Voss broke the all-time single money winnings record. And 1989 looks like it's going to be about the same. The veterans are bat. There's a sprinkling of some newcomers out here. And a fabulous field we have today. Remember, this ARC tournament was the site of Jim Stefanich's 300 game, the 7-10 split conversion by Mark Roth, the only time ever on TV. So anything can happen, happen in the opening tournament. The field has a good sprinkling of veterans. There's a newcomer in the number one spot. We have a left-hander. We have power players. We have straight ball shooters. So, Chris, they're ready to fire the first shot of 1989, and there's a lot of money at stake. It's a take. Yes. Hi. Hi. We're happy. We'll, we'll shorten it up. How much do I have to go on uh, Wide World? Well, uh, can I say less than I said or not? Maybe I shouldn't name names. The event and uh, Mike Holland. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll, I don't think that's right, but, so I'd rather not say it. Well, it's, it's, it was the first time it'd be significant. Third time, so what does it mean? The fact that he won it. I don't think it's right, Carl. I'll tell you right now.
All right, he wanted to turn it in the summer of 87. He thinks it's about yes. time to win again. Angela. Parker Bones. And the winner of that picture day will be the two qualifier bowler with a hot hand. He won the Bud Classic just two tournaments ago. And he's knocking on the door again, Ron Williams. The winner of that third game will be meeting our tournament leader in the final game for the championship, although he's been a pro for seven years. This is his first championship round here. And this afternoon finds him in that enviable position of waiting in the wings to bowl just one game for $18,000 in his first championship, Dave D'Entremont. A number of things we'd like to ask of you during the length of our telecasting championship round. Primarily, we'd like for you to be in an enthusiastic audience, just as you've been all week long. Pick a beer or root farm. Do a little hoot and hollering out there. However, keep in mind, the name of the game is concentration. The voters do request that once they step up on the approach to start their delivery, you show them the courtesy of remaining still until the shot is away. Once the shot is away, that's really how you react. The important thing... Chris has, has left, I think, to... Uh, to uh... Feel for them and once they step up onto the approach, remain still, give them an opportunity to concentrate and do their work, and we're going to have a lot of fun here this afternoon. Our telecast is of an hour and a half duration. There will be four games. We we'll then have presentations of our championship check and trophy. We'd like for you to please remain seated until we are off the air. And ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed watching the greatest bowlers perform, meeting them, perhaps bowling with them in the Pro-Am, you owe your thanks to the people that make it possible. This is the 16th consecutive year that our friends at ARC have sponsored this outstanding event. We'd like to thank them for our long-standing relationship and for their interest in professional bowling. We'd like for you to help us thank them by welcoming the president of ARC, a longtime friend of professional bowling, Mr. Robert Breaker. You come on and just miss the final. Here I was 88 under here. First block? 76 under the first block. What'd you do? Just got your rhythm, huh? No, I went from here to here and drifted left. I just drifted left. By drifting left, it opened. I had the whole lane. Columbia Tour Consultant and Hall of Famer, John Jowdy. Cardinelli. Western Regional Director of the PBA and PBA Hall of Famer, Ted Hoffman. Thanks for your time.
coverage. We have some nervous this afternoon. I understand it be so. The wife and daughter of our number five qualifier, Catherine and Darlene Schlegel. And the wife and daughter of our number five qualifier, Travis and Angela Webb. The following is an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Chris Warren, Bowers, Bell, Monticelli, Rodolfo, Cook, Maurice. A standard national PBA tournament begins on Monday when approximately 120 non-exempt players buy for 60 spots. They join 100 exempt players to make a field of 160. They can't all bowl at once, so players divide into two squads with rotating shifts. They'll bowl two six-game blocks on Wednesday. 
Buck, why don't you get the new pants? Find them. Another six-game block, Thursday. And then the first cut is made in the tournament to 24 players. The top 24 then bowl 24 match games Thursday evening, Friday morning, and evening. A lot of bowling, a lot of wear and tear in five days. The bowlers need equipment for their weekly jaunt, and most of them are serviced by this van owned and operated by Larry Lickstein, a former PBA member. I would say this year we're going to drill about six or 7,000 bowling balls. We provide grips, rosin bags, bowling bags, all our locker room supplies. Many of those supplies are stored in here. The uh, amount of equipment that we're carrying every week is uh, probably in the area of 40,000 pounds to each city. And back in the lanes, the activity continues at a furious pace. Records to keep, media to provide for, moving up and down the charts, five days until the top five emerge and make the coveted finals. And boy, have they earned it. ABC Sports presents live from a pretty valley called Pinole near San Francisco in its 28th season, the Professional Bowlers Tour. Qualifying in fifth place, he last won in 1985 the outgoing PBA president, Ernie Schlegel. In our first match, he'll face the 16-time champion from Beaumont, Texas, Wayne Webb. In the second game, looking for his second PBA title from Freehold, New Jersey, Parker Bone the third. In second position, celebrating his 27th birthday, also vying for his second title, Ron Williams. And our tournament leader, making his first career championship round appearance from Cleveland, Ohio, David D'Entremont. That's our field for the $125,000 ARC Pinole Open on the Professional Bowlers Tour. And this, of course, is the Golden Gate Bridge. What a memory-provoking scene. We begin our tour of 16 cities, our first stop, right here at the Pinole Valley Bowling Lanes for our first telecast of 1989. And it's my pleasure to say hello and welcome you to our series. I'm Chris Schenkel. And you know, when we started 28 years ago, it was black and white television. There was no videotape, no videotape replays. Uh, my friend Johnny Carson had not started his nightly series. And to put it really into perspective, reality sets in when you consider this fact. Our three top bowlers on our telecast today weren't even born <laughs> when we started. Well, as usual, uh, we are always the first part of ABC Saturday afternoon one-two punch because we're followed by Wide World of Sports and today the beautiful competition, the premiere for 1989 of the World Figure Skating Challenge of Champions. Also, a look at a big event in ski jumping. United States Premier Ski Jumper Mike Holland winning a World Cup competition yesterday in Austria, plus the Athlete of the Year presentation. We're also pleased to announce for the first time in our series that the hearing impaired community will further enjoy with closed captions. We'll tell you more about that later. Right now, uh, first time in 89, veteran of 15 years now on our telecast, Nelson Burton, Jr. Here he is. Thank Hello. you, Chris. Hello. Well, uh, I couldn't remember that black and white either, partner. I know you were in the credit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, 1988 was a banner year for the PBA. We saw Bob Benoit roll 300 at the Quaker State. Brian Voss broke the single season money record. And 1989 promises to be just the same. All the veterans are back. There's a sprinkling of really good young talent out here. Now, the ARC Open has always produced some memory in itself. 1974, Jim Stefanich, 300 game. 1980, Mark Roth, the only time on television, converted the 7-10 split. And with a great field today, we will have some of that action. We have some veterans in there. We have a power player of the leader. We have a left-hander in the field. And we have a straight shooter right down in the first number one spot. 
the ex-president of the PBA. So, Chris, it's going to be a good year. There's a lot of money in stake, and they're ready to go. And we are ready to go. Thank you, Bo. As we look at the purse breakdown, 18,000 of the winner, 9,500, 7,500, and the loser of our very first match uh, will receive $4,500. You're looking at uh, Wayne Webb, who is the winner of 16 tournaments on tour. Most, of course, in today's field. His opponent, Ernie Schlegel, has won four PBA titles. Here's a stylist, Bo, that... Uh, a little different style, but so effective. All right, Chris, he is, uh, I believe, one of the best natural talents we've ever seen. A great arm swing. <laughs> Wayne Webb, uh, opening shot, uh, somewhat struggled in warming up. He kept saying, I can't get a hook on the left-hand lane, which is 29, and hooks too much on 30. So he's a bit confused, and he'll have to make some adjustments for a strike shot in the early going. Wayne Webb, who is the 1980. Firestone Tournament of Champions winner. He was second in this event last year held at another bowling establishment. So Wayne Webb marks with a spare and to really succeed on the tour you have to mark with spares consistently. Ernie Schlegel, what a veteran, what a colorful veteran. 21 years a PBA member as we mentioned briefly. He is the past president, immediate past president, of the Professional Bowlers Association. He's on the right lane, first shot, 45 years of age. Sliding by, so he'll, like Wayne, have the a pin to shoot at. Boards are cracking when he moves. And you will hear him talk to himself. Ernie Schlegel, the veteran, as you said, Chris, uh, rolls the ball that many of the league bowlers can understand or empathize with as the standard down-and-in shot. He's from the old school, and he learned to bowl on lacquer lanes. Worth. All right, the match is all even after one frame, and both, if there are two professionals on the tour that know how to psych their opponents, we're looking at them right here. I agree, Chris. They do have a lot of experience. Here's Ernie's profile. Five-step delivery, real good arm swing, everything in good position. You notice he rolled it very smoothly at the line, doesn't play much hook, it depends on accuracy. Lay, baby, come on. Well, the ball listened to him that time. Ernie Schlegel, who hasn't won since 85, and Wayne Webb hasn't won in three years and nine months. Sort of disbelief when we talked about it earlier, Bo, with him. He is a great winner. I think he's one of the great clutch players, and obviously one of the great players. He's closing in on a million dollars in lifetime earning and winning. And as he crossed over, left the nine pin on the right lane. Wayne comes from a, a bowling family. Both his brother and his father have rolled 300 games, and... He comes from an area where duck pins was also part of the game. So, Connecticut area, Wayne Webb across lane, single pin spare the nine pin, should have no problem. So, the five foot five inch professional now bowling out of Beaumont, Texas. He's lived in Rehoboth, Massachusetts, Lodi, New Jersey, Indianapolis, and now Beaumont. Vancouver, Washington was that man's residence, Schlegel. Wayne Webb, five foot five inches in stature, takes a short approach, ends up about one foot behind the foul line, but the good, good hand action, good direction. Right now trails by one pin, third frame. And again, that single pin. Imperfect hit for Wayne Webb. The two pin almost goes over. The head pin went to the sideboard and almost came back. And watch the action of the head pin. It goes to the sideboard, comes behind the two pin, spins between the eight. The eight almost falls forward to make it a strike. Easy spare for Wayne. Wayne Webb, who four years in a row, won over $100,000 bowling. 
and in his career, Ernie Schlegel, whom we're looking now, is over the $600,000 mark. Deliberate style, sometimes finding trouble and pulling the trigger. Well, by PBA rules, Chris, he has 15 seconds uh, in which to initiate a shot from the time he steps on the approach. Wanted that double to take a bigger lead, so he'll have to cross lane and knock down the 10 pin on the right side. Schlegel, with good technique, tries to uh, play the extreme outside line on the right-hand lane, leaves what we call the soft 10. See the ball not quite finishing. Watch the action of the 6 pin, the second pin on the right-hand part of your screen. Doesn't quite knock out the 10 pin. Schlegel up. Easy spare. All right, earlier we had an opportunity to ask Ernie what he, uh, why he does so well at his age. Well, I kept myself in uh, great physical shape and uh, with all the knowledge that I've accumulated over the years, it's uh, made the game a lot easier. I don't fight the game as much. And uh, it, to me, it, a bowling's a hobby now. It's not a living. Okay. Could be a very lucrative I'll be here today if he can go all the way. All right. Ernie Schlegel going against 16-time winner Wayne Webb here at Pinole Valley Lanes near San Francisco. Carol. Carol. Back on this, all right. The championship here this week is, uh, I'll show you the oiling pattern. The PBA puts oil down to approximately 18 feet, and then the, what we call is they drag it down to 41 feet. This is the long oil system that the PBA uses, and both lanes are identically the same. And what happens is the characteristic of the left lane, lane 29, allows it to hook a little bit less than lane 30. So let's see how Wayne Webb attacks the pair. He's struggling right now. Fourth frame for Webb. A high hit and an awesome leave. Oh, what a pity. Well, this is an unusual leave, but Wayne Webb can make this. What he has to do is get that bowling ball over to the 3-6 zone right here. Drive the three pin over into the four seven. It's the unusual three four six seven ten split. It's makeable, Chris. Tried for that conversion. That's a four seven on the right lane, and it's an open and a break for Schlegel. Wayne Webb. We asked him why, who he fears in our field today. Actually, the only person I fear is myself. If I can come out striking early, I feel as if uh, I'll have a real good day. And uh, keeping my game real sharp and making my spares today is probably going to be the key point. Look at that rebounding shot. 
After an open frame like uh, the champions do so often, they come back with a powerful strike. That in the fifth frame. But Ernie Schlegel with a strike up is leading by 19. Important for Ernie as he leads by 19 with a strike up to nail Wayne Webb early. Webb, once he gets zeroed in, can throw much, many more strikes than Schlegel. So Schlegel has to get him while he's down before Wayne figures out the championship here and makes a rush. Important shot. Leaving the seven pin. Ernie, who looks very awkward at the line. What However, he's, Chris, he's trying to keep his the speed of his feet down. He's trying. He said he was rushing the line as he uh, and he's getting his timing off. So as you see the ball going a little bit wide, he gets, could have gotten a good break and have the head pin take out the seven for a double. Another thing about Ernie, he's using a ball that hooks on the right hand lane and a ball that doesn't hook on the left. Just covers the pin. Ernie Schlegel leading by 19 in our very first game. The winner will meet Parker Bone the third as we look at Webb, then Ron Williams, and then David D'Entremont, a non-winner and is the tournament leader today. Schlegel with a different ball on the left-hand lane, a lane that doesn't hook as much. He's also playing around the second arrow. He's playing on the left lane, first arrow on the right. Oh, Ernie, 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 Ernie! Oh, yeah. Yeah. You ought to like Ernie. What a smooth release. Just placing it on the lanes. That's when you know you're playing the lanes correctly. Ernie, by you could tell by his little commentary, had felt he made a mistake and ended up with a strike. That's when you know you're doing the right thing when you have that margin of error. Now let's see if Webb can get back, look back in the match. Trails by 19. A strike would cut the lead of Schlegels to just nine. Again, very high hit. Three, six, mm -hmm. nine, ten. I would put it in a category of the top five tough spares. This is one of them. As you see, Wayne going high, chopping six pins off the left side. Now, there's two things he can do. He can either play a somewhat of a straight shot across the lane from the left to the right into the three, six, or play the big hook and try to come in from the right side. He's playing the big hook. Beautifully done. The man that in the 80s has won $771,000. And he had eight consecutive years where he won at least one title. Now, the record is 14 consecutive years. And that was Earl Anthony and Don Johnson, 12, Mark Roth, 10, and Dick Weber, 8. And... Careful preparation. Well, can he do what Mark Roth once did on our telecast? It happened in 1980, Chris, the 7 10 split. Roth converted by driving the 10 pin into the right hand corner of the pit, having it bounce out and come across. Here's what Roth did he hit the 10 pin, bounced it out, came all the way across, rolled over, and knocked the 7 down. Let's see if that's the strategy that Wayne Webb takes. And obviously he's going for the seven pins. He went across lane. He wasn't watching that telecast. Okay. He now. might get it anyway. So with uh, <laughs> two open frames now, it'll be, it'll be very difficult for him to match his performance last year in this event when he finished second.
Record-breaking year for Brian Voss. Most ever, 225,485, followed by Benoit Weber, Ferraro, and Williams. Since we're running a little behind our schedule in the very deliberate first game, we've had two frames bowled by Ernie Schlegel. Struck in the seventh, spare in the eighth, leads by 41, and now live, Wayne Webb with a strike here in this first match coming in the eighth frame. He's had two opens, which have proven disastrous as he looks at the overhead score sheet. Really, Wayne Webb has struggled in this match until the fifth frame. He got lined up in the fifth frame on the left-hand lane through a strike, went high, left the three, six, nine, ten in the sixth frame on the right, then left the seven, ten split here on in the seventh frame. If he has any chance to win the match, he must strike right now on this ball. Leaving the four pin on the left lane. Wayne Webb, 31 years old. Three years and nine months since he's won, and with a total of 16, it's most unusual. Has support here in his wife, Travis, and seven-year-old daughter, Angela, watching along with you. But, Bo, it's a lonely sport. Only you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like uh, any other individual. You got the boxers, maybe the tennis players, sudden death in golf, and bowlers get used to it every day. It's match game play, and it's a matter of defeating your opponent. Now you're looking at Schlegel in the ninth frame. His lead is 41 pins. Is a spare working in the eighth. Any kind of mark here in the ninth or tenth frames locks up the match for Schlegel. Hurting the split, leaving the four seven. Could have fooled me. Could have fooled me. Well. Ernie, who doesn't play much break on the ball, felt that ball with what we call set in the 1-3 pocket. And it broke a little bit at the last two feet and left the easy spare, the 4-7. This conversion here will lock it up for Ernie. He does it. So it means $4,500 to the loser, Wayne Webb of Beaumont, Texas, and Parker Bone the third will be Ernie's next That's opponent. Right. Ernie checking with our PBA coordinator, Frank Esposito. Recent bridegroom. Congratulate he and his wife, Carol. Schlegel makes it official now He's, as won the first game and will meet Parker Bone the third. Don't go away. More after this.
Forty-five year old Ernie Schlegel has moved ahead with a 216 Wayne Webb 178. Ernie with six strikes will now meet 25 year old Parker Bone the third of Freehold, New Jersey. Budweiser is sponsoring a $50,000 pointless competition which will run through the winter and spring tours. Players finishing among the top 24 places will be awarded points and of course money. And the first place at the end of it all will get $25,000. Brian Voss won it last year. So we'll keep you informed as we go along. This is our first stop in a tour of 16 cities on the Professional Bowlers Tour. Parker Bone the third. 5'10", 144 pounds, very likable young man. Really coming into his own, Chris, he's uh, 25 years old. He he's rolls a uh, nice smooth shot down the left side, one of the few left-handers that has enjoyed any kind of uh, scoring out here in the last couple of years. Just aren't that many lefties successful since Anthony Mike Albee, of course, still competing. You're right, Chris. Is uh, Albee a little bit in the slump as you see Parker Bones' ball entering the one-two pocket, the three-pin coming over and clipping out the six and tens. Now Schlegel, who's playing the outside line on lane 30, out around the first arrow with a ball that doesn't hook much, and he's playing the inside line on the left lane. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Leaving a four pin, the man who had a big year in 1980 after a drought of 12 years where he had not won. Chris, in 1980, uh, I bowled Ernie for his first title. He bowled around a 240 or 50 against me, and uh, everybody said, well, once he gets through the jinx of winning that first match, he'll kind of boss him into a star, and he has been very steady over the last seven or eight years. Last year in this event, he lost in his first match from third seed to Mike Jasno of Wichita. Mike, uh, this year with some wrist problems, finished uh, 102. He was last year's champion. Weeks average, 212. Yeah, come on, buddy. Okay, with six strikes in his victory against Wayne Webb. 216 total. He comes up with his first here against Parker Bone, the third. Parker, a determined young man, has a couple of sponsors that have put him out here in the tour, and he's rewarded him with uh, good winnings over the years. And he can only get better. He's really dedicated towards his game as a hard worker. Bone's a pro shot. Howell Lanes in New Jersey. And Parker just about by the book. Good solid push away on the first step, four step delivery, slides perpendicular to the foul. And look at that good knee bend, high follow through. The results of a well executed shot for all 10 pins, and he does have a leap over Schlegel. Dave Davis, the veteran, and veteran Mark Roth have helped this young man al along the way. Last year he won uh, two titles in Pennsylvania, and some cash to go with it using the full grip, just inserting his fingers down to the first knuckle. Really got to be pretty happy with that shot. Uh, Parker pulled the ball to the right of his target, and sometimes it drifts a little bit high and you leave the 4-6 split. He knocked out the 4-pin left, a very simple 6-pin. He would maintain his 9-pin lead. Look at how high this ball is. Just pushes out the four and sevens pins. Smooth spare shot. Parker Bone. Ernie Schlegel now with a strike in the second, shooting in the third with a trailing by nine. Can change that and lead by one. there on the right of the screen and Darlene Schlegel, uh, her daughter. 
Are they tense? You bet. Watch this preparation. The outgoing president of the PBA has the distinction of being the only president not to win a championship while in office. He says he's going to extend his office a little bit longer if he can win <laughs> the day. To take an 11 pin lead right here. Leaving a 10 pin. Current, the current president of the PBA is John Petraglia. One of Ernie's best shots and doesn't get the desired result, the solid 10. And people often ask, what's the difference between the solid 10 and the soft 10? It's just the angle the six pin takes around the 10 pin. Ernie Schlegel and his 32nd bowling telecast. We've enjoyed watching him perform. The average leader throughout a year is always significant, and again, Mark Roth, by the narrowest of margins over Pete Weber, Brian Voss, Ferraro, and Williams. Pretty strong group right there. You can average above 215 on a professional bowlers tour for a whole year. You're a six-figure player. You have to win, unless you're really unlucky, more than $100,000. Now, Parker Bone on the fourth frame, the match is all even. He has a spare up. that five out of there, Chris. Oh, yeah. We asked Parker earlier why there weren't more left-handed bowlers on the tour. I think the big change for the past couple of years, the lanes have been a little bit tight on the left side, and it's caused not that much breakdown, and obviously not, not a real lot of hook. Uh, lately, this week especially, there's there's been some hook on the left side, and you know, for me, that fit my game because I grew up where I had to throw the ball pretty hard and firm. So I just fell into place this week. Now the 25-year-old leads by 10. Mark Ramon. Boy, he has to like that shot. He almost roped it straight into the pocket. He played a wide sweeping hook on the right-hand lane, blew the pins out in the fourth, and now he puts the what we call the frozen rope on him in the fifth. Ernie's in for a tight match this time. It won't be a cakewalk like the first match where Wayne Webb was just confused on how to get to the pocket. See how Schlegel responds. Spare up. No! <laughs> Leaving a 6-10 on the right lane. Schlegel turns the ball early, one of the habits that pros get into every once in a while, but amateurs often fall into this slump. They try to make the ball hook, and what happens, they rotate that thumb counterclockwise to before he rotates, before he lifts the ball, and goes high. So Schlegel, with that fingertip grip, will quickly go with a 6'10 spear. Got a good break. See that Schlegel is trailing by 12. 
season's premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports, World Figure Skating Challenge of Champions, men's and women's competition, the very best. Mike Holland, ski jumping, winning in Austria yesterday. Not a winning shot for Ernie Schlegel, leaving the seven pin. An excellent effort by Ernie, playing the inside line on the left-hand lane. He hits the one three pocket, saws the five over towards the seven pin but he doesn't get the good break. And he grabs a second ball quickly to make this spare. I don't go with that move, Chris. Keep with that first ball. Seems to be more and more of that, Bo. Use of... Well, there's two schools of thought. And uh, one is that you take a ball that doesn't hook so that you can have accuracy at the spares. That's good and fine, but often the two bowling balls do not feel exactly the same. The grip may be drilled the same, but any of you who own two bowling balls know they never feel the same, and we've seen players either hang in a spare ball or drop it, causing them to miss, so... He's trying for three in a row, leaving the three, five, six. Parker a little anxious wants to get this strike to jump out to a big lead over Ernie. Feet get too fast, the ball doesn't come up, and he's got a spare he's got to be a little bit careful with, the 3-5-6. Two of the big names on the tour last year, Marshall Holman and Walter Ray Williams Jr. Marshall finished 31st, Walter Ray Williams Jr. in the 43rd position. First stop, 16 telecasts it's really span the country. Next week we go south to Torrance, California, Gable House for the AC Delco Championship. And that's a bowling center where we saw Pete McCordick roll that 300 two years ago. Pete finished 12th this year as Parker Bone leaves the seven pin. Parker Bowman with the seven pin is once again up on the approach with a second ball. Try to cut that hook down, make it a little bit easier. Okay. During the midpoint of our second match on our live telecast from Pinole Valley Lanes near San Francisco. We'll be back. Okay, we're looking at Ron Williams, and just passing through the sc screen was our tournament leader, now a full shot of David D'Entremont of Cleveland, Ohio, a non-winner looking for his first title. Very coordinated player, very confident player. Meanwhile, Ernie Schlegel is trailing by nine pins in his second match, this against Parker Bohm III. Ernie won the first game, if you just joined us, 216 to Wayne Webb's 178. Now with the spare up, seventh frame, Ernie Schlegel. Again, concentration broken.
two and five left on the right lane. Kearney's so starting to loosen up a little bit in the match now. Uh, he won that first match pretty handily. Here in the seventh frame, he gets a little quick with the ball, sails it by and leaves the two five. The only thing you have to guard about here as a, as a pro bowler is to, not to hook the ball too much and chop the two off the five. With this conversion, Ernie would still trail by 11. Oh. In his fifth television appearance is Parker Bone the third. And as you see, he has an 11 pin lead on Schlegel who moves to the left lane now. Looking at the score sheet. Bo, did you talk to yourself when you were really competing? <laughs> no, not really, Chris. I don't think I was uh, really conscious of what I uh, said. I think most of the players tend to keep their concentration, their thoughts to themselves. Obviously, Ernie is pretty relaxed out there, and it helps him. Yeah. Ernie's a pretty good showman, too. I'm not anybody kid you. Ernie's on a mission. He's been out here for a number of years. He's one of the surviving old timers. He loves that uh, kind of tag that he's one of the the older players out here on the tour, and he's still very competitive. And if you love the sport, you can stay competitive in bowling a long time. Don't lose that enthusiasm. You can stay a top pro. Oh, Parker leaving just the five. Bo, we watch them adjusting their grips from time to time, and amateur bowlers in particular. Your, your tip of the week concentrates on that today. Good point, Chris. Uh, we talk a little bit about how to keep the good feel in a bowling ball. And if you saw Ernie up there, that frame on the right-hand lane, he stepped back off because he just didn't have the good feel. It's so important to be positive and know that that ball is coming off your hand properly. We cover that in a tip. Coming up soon. And the only left-hander in the field of five. Continues to lead now by 10 pins and coming to the crucial ninth frame now. And David D'Entremont, our tournament leader, and the next man up, Ron Williams, continue to warm up. You hear pinfall when our two competitors are actually competing. That's the other two practicing off to our right. Left-hand lane, Parker Bone has been high almost every shot. Got a strike there in the first frame, went high and left the sixth pin in the third, struck in the fifth. Once again, he went high in the seventh, leaves the sixth pin again in the ninth frame. Just a little bit high. This three pin doesn't drive straight back in the sixth with a conversion. He will lead by nine. So as uh, we have only nine pins separating the two professionals, there's always that possibility of a tie. And should that happen, as, as always, there is a two-frame immediate roll-off. On the other side of the coin, Chris uh, Schlegel, if he could strike here in the ninth, tenth, and eleventh frames, would shut out Parker Bones. So the match is in each individual's hands. As important as the strike was to make bring Ernie into the lead for the first time in the match, he also made the adjustment to move inside on the right-hand lane, more like he's playing the left-hand lane. So when he's playing both lanes around the second arrow, gives him much more opportunity of getting a good rhythm. Now, as I said before, Schlegel can control his own destiny. A strike here in the 10th, another one in the 11th, and he shuts out Parker Bone. Again, the importance of the shot causing him to come back and drawing off that hand, adjusting his grip now. <laughs> came back from the line with a sort of a dicey hand movement, like, oh, oh. 
Well, that's where the good arm swing comes in. Ernie Schlegel kind of lost that ball at the bottom of his swing, but his, his arm was directly in line with his target. He doesn't play much hook. Had that ball ease up the head pin, carried a wall shot there, and he's put himself in a position where he can shut out Parker Bone with a strike right here. The man with the shades. The blue blockers, or blue whatever he said they were, he <laughs> says it box out all the glare. I think uh looked pretty good on Ernie. People that compete shooting often wear those glasses. For the win, right here. Well, it's bye-bye for this game, but he's got tough Ron Williams to face next. Let's go to the tip of the week with Nelson Burton, Jr. With seven strikes, Ernie Schlegel at 45 years of age has won his second match, eliminating Parker Bone the third, who shot a 223. And now Ron Williams steps in. Hottest bowler on the tour, having won only six weeks ago. Upcoming, as we said, Torrance, California for the AC Delco Classic. Chris, and then the oldest stop on the PBA Tour, the Showboat, where we have a tremendously large field and the largest bowling center in the United States. That'll be on January 21st. And on the 28th, we head down to one of your favorite areas, Grand Prairie, Texas. And then over to Miami, Florida for the Budweiser Classic. Budweiser Classic, the first of two. Okay, there were 144 players in the starting field today. Average gain, 202. The top 24, 210 to make the top 24. And here are some of the players that finished from 6 through 24. A strong group. Don Moser, a local favorite, made good charts. The fireball, ringing her, Todd Williams up there. Jim Miller won the showboat. Rowdy Morrow, Ron Williams, who is coming in this match's partner. Palumbi, McCordick, you know those names. George Branham, Studley Mark Baker, the wizard. David Houston, always there. Ray Perez, the pride of Cincinnati. Purvis Granger, Jim Tilton, Earl Zeman. Westlake, a great clutch player. The smooth Don Janelle, Dave Arnold, watch him. Great game. And Roger Coughlin, round out the top 24. So as you look at the 10 bowling pins here at the Pinole Valley Bowling Lanes near Oakland and near San Francisco, it's sunny but cool outside in the Bay Area. And the season's premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports, Brian Boitano, Debbie Thomas, Brian Orser of Canada, just a few of the champions, many, many Olympic medal winners, including one of my favorites, Dorothy Hamill, competing. And Rosalind Sumners, who is a, uh, came out to watch the Professional Bowlers Tour a couple of years ago, uh, will also be competing. Chris, it should be mm -hmm. very exciting. All right, a man that's celebrating his 27th birthday today from Cahokia, Illinois. Unusual style, Ron Williams. Oh, but such an effective shot. 
Ron has the unusual style, Chris, but he has the hot hand. He's an experienced player, and I think one of the things that Ron has going for him is he learned to bowl in the St. Louis area where you learn to bowl both on what we call lacquer surfaces, though the old carry-back lane surfaces, not the urethane, and lacquer surfaces have a tendency to hook less and track on the right side, wear more, so you have to learn a few more shots. Ron Williams is armed with those shots, as is his opponent, who has as much moxie as any player in the top five today. A man who's won two matches, Ernie Schlegel. And Ernie accepts the pressure of the perfect shot by his opponent, Ron Williams. All even after one frame. Schlegel cannot roll the ball any better than that. He was nice and relaxed. He came up and just made a wonderful shot. Looks like the only person that can beat him right now is somebody with a hot hand or Ernie himself. And remember last year, Mike Jazz now went right through a field, Chris, won all mm -hmm. four games and he got stronger as he went. Let's see if Schlegel can be up to that task today. Took a re rack, Ernie. Should have took a re rack. Back, uh, which is his option to take a re rack, Bo. <laughs> well, th you're allowed to re rack the opening, uh, the, the first set of the pins three times in a match. And, uh, I don't think he would have struck no matter what if he, in that particular hit. It's not solid. Okay. Now, Ron Williams, 5'10, 180 pounds. Engaged, engaged to be wed to Bonnie Hartman. The date of the Firestone Tournament of Champions, April 22nd. Good time to get married, and Ron <laughs> will be making his first appearance at the Firestone. And the man that finished second overall in this field, 144, has doubled. Williams, the unusual style, the good push away, four step delivery, just cups the ball, then turns that elbow inward, but he rectifies the whole arm swing by getting it down underneath his body, and obviously he likes that type of shot. Another good thing about, I think, Ron Williams' style is he stays underneath the ball with both his slide leg, that left foot, and his hand, and he lofts the ball well out over the lane. He lifts it, doesn't throw it, and it's easier to control. Boom, nice shot there. John Carter's watching. We Don, hope. Don Carter, of course, had that crooked arm style, right, Chris? You saw mm -hmm. him bowl many a day. Wonderful. And, of course, we'll do, be doing a telecast again from Don's Kendall, Florida lanes. It will be our fifth stop. Now, Schlegel trailing by 20, third frame. <laughs> Certainly isn't getting meeker, this 45-year-old. He's uh, good and loose and ready for the uh, contest. Trailing no by 20 can cut it to 10 with a strike in the fourth. Professional bowling at this level, the championship round, is all match game play. And in every match game, there are key frames. And right now, for Williams, and especially for Schlegel, this is a key frame. If Schlegel would have an open or get it just to spare, he would leave the door wide open for Ron Williams to run away from him. So he really wants this one. And Ernie is back within 10 here in his third match of our telecast from Pano Valley, California. Stay tuned.
Okay, we're back again here at Pinot Valley Lanes. Ron Williams uh, had a strike in the fourth, and then he left this little cluster. So for Ron Williams, it's a spare in the fifth frame in a relatively close match against Ernie Schlegel, who's won two games coming into this semifinal match. Schlegel averaging 225 in his two victories, first over Wayne Webb, 216 to 178, and then over Parker Bone, 234 to 223. World figure skating, the very best Olympic medalists, men and women. Look at Mike Holland, United States premier ski jumper, winning a World Cup in Austria. <laughs> Ernie Schlegel does not bowl any better than this, Chris. He has played very smart the first two games. He was there in the clutch when he needed it to shut out his opponent. As you see his ball driving through the one, three, five, and nine pins. The bowling ball only, only hits four pins, and we have a power failure right here in the bowling center right now, Chris. We have no bowling balls. We have no lights <laughs> in the center. Our ABC television lights are still working, however. You know, when we were talking about figure skating, uh, the last time the lights went out when I was doing a telecast in Hartford, Connecticut at the World Championships, they went out and didn't come back on for a long time. <laughs> now, will those blue re stoppers, those shades help him? <laughs> we get a ruling here. Harry Golden, our Two. tournament director, uh, uh, down here and is saying, wait, our electricians, I'm sure, will... Uh, come up with the solution. Well, there's some options in bowling, Chris. Uh, obviously, everybody's uh, murmuring and wanting, wondering what to do. In bowling, they can actually hand feed the bowling ball back to the player mm -hmm. and have the, the pins set up uh, by hand, a la pin boy. So uh, it's up to the decision of our tournament director on what they should do at this point. Ernie continues to limber up uh, those older muscles while Ron Williams at 27 just sort of sits there coolly so while we have an opportunity uh, we want you to know more about one of our most important sponsors Now, this is one of those times when we appreciate the efforts of Thomas Edison, because you can see more than half of this bowling establishment, Pinole Valley Lanes in California, uh, is without its usual uh, lighting effects. So we have a uh, halt in play here. We're uh, hoping, Bo, to get a determination from our tournament director from the very beginning, Harry Golden, who is checking with the technicians here. It has to do with the house, not with us. There's a good look at Harry. And this is one of those pressure moments for a tournament director. Well, it's unusual to say the least. In all the years I have uh, been around professional bowling, I've been a member of the PBA since 1960, we do have rules to cover disasters. In other words, they would continue on with the match game at a different point in a different bowling center, but not a power out in a championship round. Uh, the match as it is right now stands with Williams four strikes and a spare lead Schlegel by seven pins. With the stoppage in play and electricity, Bo, which player will it affect most? 
Chris, there's a PBA rule says that if you're delayed by more than five frames, now who's supposed to determine which, how long five frames becomes, then it becomes Harry Golden's alternative to give each player two practice shots on the opposite lane that they're due up on. Schlegel is up on lane 29. He would get two practice shots on 30. That's Harry Golden's determination. And we have a ruling when power is restored. Uh, we will continue. So, Bo, how would you like to be interviewed for 22 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not so bad, Chris. The, no. uh, I think it's interesting. We said at the top of the telecast, unusual things have happened in the ARC Open. Jim Savanich, the 300. Mark Roth, the 710 split. And, of course, uh, for anybody who's watching us or just tuned in now, we have a power outage at the Pinole Open. The only saving grace of this particular moment, I must say, is the fact that we better all appreciate electricity a little more <laughs> because without it here, we're stymied at the moment. The bowling pins are there, so we're waiting. Professional Bowlers Tour will continue after this message and a word from your local stations. Stand by piece of Stephanie just 300 gave the queue up right now. I told you at the top of the show that we started out in black and white television 28 years ago. Well, we have a power outage here in Pinole Valley, California. The whole town's without electricity. The lighting that you see is our ABC generator providing the power for. Um, the light that you see. This has gone on for some time. Meanwhile, Parker, or Ron Williams and Ernie Schlegel are just biding their time. We're in our third match with, with uh, Ron Williams uh, leading by seven pins. Let's now join Frank Gifford. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to suggest... Interview him? Okay. So I can set the, you know. How much time now has there been with an outage, would you say? Yeah.
Where do you want me, Ned? Okay. Goose, come on out here. Five minutes what? Tell, t tell me the time you want. Okay. I don't know what... Okay. How much time do you want me to use, Ned? Okay. This depends. We may have to use it all. <laughs> this is great, Goose. Yeah, how about that? Hey. Goose, huh? It's you, Ned. Nice going. <laughs> Bring Garland out next time. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Frank. And for those of you that just joined us for about 10 minutes now, we've been without electricity here in the Pinot Valley Lanes. The whole area has lost power. The lighting that we have comes from our own ABC generators, which are providing the lighting that is always necessary for a telecast. Uh, Ernie Schlegel and Ron Williams were reaching the midpoint of the third game. Schlegel winning two as we look at Williams now. Williams leading by seven pins, so with play halted to get a further determination from our tournament director, here's Bo Burton. Thank you, Chris. Uh, with me, uh, obviously, our national tournament director, Harry Golden. This is a first here, and uh, what are your options? We've been out 10 minutes, Goose. Uh, it's a pretty close match, five frames. Uh, what are you looking forward to? Well, uh, it's the city of Pinole. They've had a power outage, and the entire area is down. Uh, we've been in contact with them. The police are here with walkie-talkies to uh, headquarters, and uh, they've informed us that they're hopeful that uh, power will be restored within five minutes. We're keeping our fingers crossed. However, as far as the match goes, we will just delay it until power is restored and conclude the matches at that time. All right, Chris, the, uh, they will probably get a couple of practice balls uh, if we're out long enough. It's Harry Golden's determination, and uh, I'll throw it back up to you, and okay. we'll see what happens in a few more minutes. We may have some action. Okay, that's the story currently. We'll give you more following this commercial from uh, Dark and Pinole Valley in California. Well, our, our first 60 minutes or so were uh, fully illuminated, as you see, as 45-year-old Ernie Schlegel won the first two matches and reaching the fifth frame of his third game against uh, second seed Ron Williams. Power, electrical power, has been lost in Pinole Valley in California. So thus competition uh, has been halted for the moment, and we have no idea when the power will be restored. Now, 27-year-old Ron Williams, this is his birthday. What a way to celebrate it, Bo. 
Oh, you're right, Chris. There is one option. Obviously, we're trying to uh, do anything we can to get power back and bowl as normal. If indeed, and obviously we may not finish this tournament in this segment of the Professional Bowlers Tour, but the PBA would finish when power comes on. They could set the pins by hand, Chris, and nobody uh -huh. has uh, really opted for that. They would have to have a mechanic down there and set them up as they did in the 1920s and 30s, one pin at a time. Okay, and while we're waiting for the 220 or the 110 to come on, let's go back to a... Whoops, we were going to go to the perfect 300 game at uh, the Quaker State Open in Grand Ferry of last year, Bob Benoit going against Mark Roth, but the cheers were for the fact that power has been restored. Hats off to the electrical company in Pinal Valley, California. Now, Ron Williams, he'll be uh, getting practice shots along with Ernie Schlegel. Williams leading by seven pins in this semifinal match. Chris, they have two practice balls on the opposite lane that they are to perform their next shot. Uh, we see Ernie Schlegel up here on the right-hand lane. He will complete his next shot on the left-hand lane after two practice balls. That's the first shot for Ernie and one for Williams. And obviously after we complete as much of this bowling as we can possibly get in, we get to the wide world of sports, mm -hmm. Chris, and one of your favorite sports. Oh, by all means. Professional ice skating. And you know, Brian uh, Boitano, the world and Olympic champion, will be renewing his uh, confrontation with Canada's Brian Orser and Debbie Thomas, uh, bronze medalist in Calgary, as you remember, right here on ABC, will be on the show. And then Dorothy Hamill, oh, one of my favorites. Plus, you'll see United States premier ski jumper Mike Holland winning a World Cup yesterday in Austria. And you know, Bo, uh, bowling is such a family game. Well, ski jumping is such a family sport, too, especially from the standpoint of rooters. The Holland family are the most incredible, devoted family to their sons who are ski jumpers that I've ever seen. So to watch Mike win a World Cup will be a big thrill on Wide World today. And we'll continue right here, Chris. We've been out uh, 17, 18 minutes to be my guest. Ernie Schlegel has three strikes in a row working. He trails in his match with Ron Williams through five frames by seven pins. He can take the lead with a fourth consecutive strike. And obviously, let's see what happens to the momentum of the match. <sighs> Come on, be cool. That's right, be cool. Be cool. From darkness to coolness now for Ernie Schlegel. He has a double working, can take the lead on this shot in the sixth frame. <sighs> Jesus. Ernie, that's what you get when you're 45 Ooh. years old, bud. Don't fit right. Don't fit right. <laughs> Tight. Uh. Come on. Mm. Two warm-up practice right, shots are really enough for a young guy like Williams. And honestly, 45, Ernie could be a lot stiffer. Any of you who are in their mid-40s or past know the difference. Comes through with that pivotal shot. With that double up, a strike here. Uh, changes the situation. The new leader is Schlegel. Won the first two games if you just joined us and this delay has been caused by a power outage here in California. Now Ron Williams. His first match of the gay day. He has a spare working trailing by three shooting in the sixth. Didn't get a break. Real aggressive shot by Williams. He was still loose out there, put the good snap on the ball, sent it a little wide and left the 10 pin. Grabs a ball that doesn't hook quite as much, a lower surface friction ball. Hopefully slide it across the third arrow into the 10 pin. And blew the second shot. You know, Chris, uh, I don't, I guess well, I'll even harp on it a little bit. We've talked about it since it's become fashionable in the last few years. A player's changing balls to shoot spares. A player of Ron Williams caliber, who is one of the top players in the world, does not need to change balls to make a single pin spare. He's accurate enough. Just kill the shot, make the spare, and go on. Don't lose your momentum. Trails by 15 now. So he starts over. Remember there was a 15 minute delay because losing electricity here in the valley and then of course these lanes. Um, Ernie Schlegel didn't bother him. He gets up his first shot with a double working a strike in the sixth, leading by 15. Now he's ready to shoot in the seventh. 
uh, asked for a re-rack and got it on the right lane. Seems to be confusion between uh, Harry Golden's ruling and uh, Ernie Schlegel as he going to bowl. And uh, they're actually talking to each other, and Harry has the prerogative of uh, penalizing Ernie in a number of ways if he doesn't get up to bowl. Obviously, he can uh, fine him some money, which is uh, in the rules, or even make him forfeit the match. Mm -hmm. Definitely has the upper hand, has four strikes in a row, leads by 15, seventh frame. Oh, yeah, baby! Yeah, yeah! So Ernie Schlegel, noticeably nervous with the twitching of his left foot and leg. Remember, he's in his third match, and he has always had a little apprehension on the approaches over the years but now leads by 25, getting ready, Bo, to uh, shoot in the left lane, eighth frame. Very true, Chris. He has a, uh, a record of basically uh, having one bad shot at a critical point in any match, and I just don't believe that's going to happen today. Ernie looks well prepared. I think uh, he's matured as well as anybody out here is experienced, and I'd be surprised if he gives this match away. Uh, obviously a little tentative trying to get a good grip on the ball, but he's keeping his mind riveted on the job in front of him, and that's throwing a strike. Ooh. All but the 10. Ernie Schlegel, who over the years has received tremendous help from his wife, Catherine. He knows this is a pretty good shot. the line. The winner of this game will meet the tournament leader, leader David D'Entremont, from Cleveland, Ohio, a non-winner. Here's Thank a man in the last three tournaments is going for a second win, having won six weeks ago the Budweiser Classic in Columbus. Right hit and they tumbled. What a great break. At the right time, just happened for Ron Williams. He came in light. The head pin went to the sideboard. Watch the action of the head pin. It'll go to the sideboard, and you'll see the two, four, five, and eight standing. The head pin twists behind the four pin. It chops out the five and eight, trips the two forward. A great break. 1986, Chris, Ron Williams was bowling Schlegel in the Showboat Invitational, 56 last qualifying game. Got a break like that, turned it into four in a row, and defeated Schlegel. Let's see what happens. Big loss on the shot in the lane. The man that made a charge last night down 298 pins with a win in the position round over David D'Entremont. He came within 17 pins of being in the top spot. Now here's a man that's come from the very first game, leading by four now. Look at that, a six-bagger. Projecting the score, Chris, Excuse Ernie me. Schlegel can shoot 259. He leads by four. He can shut out Ron Williams. Ron Williams currently going at a 235 pace, Schlegel at a 239. It's up to the man who performs in the tenth. Ernie had a spare in the eighth frame, interrupting his string. It started again in the ninth, and... Incredible. After a 15-minute delay because of the loss of a electrical power here in the lanes, this 45-year-old has come right back. Bowling as well as I have ever seen Ernie, and as confidently, and the graphic tells the story, he needs a strike here in the 11th and seven pins to shut out his opponent. He did it to Parker Bone. Parker had a chance to win the match. Ernie came up in the 9th, 10th, and 11th frames and just slammed the door. He has an opportunity to do it again right here. There was Catherine. 
after every shot is on her feet cheering for the bowling ball and her husband, of course. 59-55, Goose. I know, all right. When he's talking to Harry Golden about who is the official scorekeeper, 259 for me is maximum, 255 for him. So basically he's telling himself he has a four-pin lead. He needs seven pins on this shot to shut out a very game Ron Williams. Strong, this 45-year-old. Ernie Schlegel now. Three victories goes into the final for 18,000. Yeah. Look at those scores of a match that was delayed 15 minutes because of a power outage. 45-year-old Ernie Schlegel with 10 strikes, eliminating Ron Williams, who had 9 strikes, 259 to 253. And needless to say, with the delay, we won't be able, with our 90-minute time period, to bring you uh, to its conclusion the final match for the championship. But Wide World of Sports follows. A wonderful show, a great show. World Figure Skating uh, Challenge of Champions. Mike Holland, Ski Jumping, uh, Athlete of the Year presentation. We will be updating you through Wide World of Sports to tell you how the match is going and, of course, the eventual winner. But um, right now, David D'Entremont, a non-winner, the tournament leader, finishing his warm-up shots, will go against Ernie Schlegelbo, who's won three games. Well, I think Schlegel has the upper hand. He's bowling sensational, Chris. Uh, Dave D'Entremont has never been in the championship round before, and uh, he's still out there throwing some practice shots. So the upper hand goes to Schlegel, Chris, and uh, as you said, we'll keep everybody updated. But D'Entremont has his hands full trying to win this match. So uh, that match, a 27-year-old at whom you're looking from Cleveland, Ohio, David D'Entremont going for his first win. Schlegel will be trying for his fifth PBA championship. So to remind you that we will update you throughout wide world of sports on the Pinole Valley Open, the ARC Open. Oh, no! 
Well, Frank, we've had nothing but perfection here in this championship match. Schlegel with three strikes in a row and his non-winning opponent, 27-year-old uh, David D'Entremont of Cleveland, Ohio, opened with a double. Here is David now shooting in the third frame to keep the match even. A little bit robbed on that shot, Bo, leaving the seven pin on the right lane. Deon Tremont came out very strong, just ripped the rack in the first frame, struck in the second frame, could have gotten a good break and kept the match even here in the third. But as we said before, we switched out to Frank, advantage all Ernie Schlegel. Our statistician today, Frank Ellenberg, a past Masters champion, said it to me and a lot of other people are saying it. They have never seen Ernie Schlegel bowling this well in a championship round under the pressure. So let's see if D'Entremont can stay close. And D'Entremont showing no sign of the pressure. Remember, this is the first time he's ever led a tournament, marking with a spare in the third. So you see 11 pins, different Schlegel in the lead. Back to Frank. Carol, are you sure you want Ned Simon around? <laughs> Good shot by Ernie there, Chris, as he just packs it solid in the fourth frame. He opens up a 22-pin lead. Schlegel taking what do you want to do? Re-rack here on the left. Yeah, we don't have to do commentary. You're taping everything, though, in case. Yes, ma'am. 
Uh, that doesn't make any difference. He's going. He's going for the hundred thousand. I tell you what, Carol, I have never seen this kid bowl, but if he strikes on this ball and Ernie doesn't strike in the sixth, the kid will beat him. That's stepping out. That's 32 pins I'm spotting you right now. Something caught my ear, maybe from over the top. I was playing light. Ernie Schlegel going for his second solid 10. He had five strikes and then two spares and leads David D'Entremont, a non-winner from Cleveland, Ohio, by 30 pins, Bo. Chris, each player has hit the pocket every frame. Schlegel, seven shots in the pocket. He has five strikes to show for it. D'Entremont, two strikes to start, a seven pin, a 10 pin, a strike, a 10 pin, trails by 30. Projecting, D'Entremont can still bowl 248. Schlegel's going at a 238 pace. The match is still alive. Burning the split, leaving the 10 pin, which is the pin that's plagued him now uh, in three frames. A very fine looking 27 year old player going against 45 year old Ernie Schlegel. Okay, Chris, if he converts this, mm -hmm. there's a possible 237 for Dave D'Entremont. Uh, Schlegel going at a 238 pace. The match is still up for grabs. All right. So from. Frank Gifford's home state of California. We go back to New York and number 16.
Yeah. Carol? Carol, you hear me? Uh, you saying about 10? Well, I hope it's not too long. I don't want to miss the flight. CBS in the summer a couple years ago. You know. after after call. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to delay the presentation so we can do it live on Wide World of Sports. So just hang in there. It'll be about three minutes of one early uh see live on Wide World. So uh, it'll be about three minutes. Spray gun down and in though. 
Yeah, give me a good count on the end because I'll need uh, Yeah, thank you. Thank you. See you later. Yeah, I hope it's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know. I'm going to call Garland. You know. This is Chris Schenkel, live at Pinot Valley, California. A 15-minute power outage did not affect the play of Ernie Schlegel. With 10 strikes in the championship match, a big 268, a 244 average for the afternoon, Schlegel has won his fifth PBA title, and today, with his wife, Catherine, a check of $18,000. There he is. Congratulations to him. Let's rejoin the World Figure Skating Challenge of Champions on ABC's Wide World of Sports.